Today we celebrate Trinity Sunday, and I can say from talking to deacons and priests across the diocese, most of them, well, I won't say most of them, many of them really dislike preaching on Trinity Sunday. Why? Because it's hard to describe this mystery. How do we get at the heart of what this is, and quite frankly, why this matters for our daily life? But this is the central mystery of our Christian faith, that God is One being, one God, one essence, one nature. But three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. While remaining one God. So, you know, I love going into the classrooms with the kids at the Catholic schools and saying, you know, okay, how many gods do we have? We have one God. Well, is Jesus God? No, yes, Jesus is God. Sometimes they get a little confused. Yes, Jesus is God. How about the Holy Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit God? Yes, the Holy Spirit's God. So we have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do we have three gods? Now they're really confused. (laughs) But it's true, we have one God, three persons. And what does this mean? Well, why is it important I can talk to a little bit? And that is, for instance, if we were to have one monopersonal God the way that some religions do in our world. If we had one monopersonal God, meaning radical uh, one God and no, no multiple persons in God, it means that either Jesus is not divine or what they call modalism is that when we're talking about Jesus, he's He's God in one mode, and then God the Father is a different mode, but the same God in only one person. So what what difference does this make? Try, uh, Try to follow me on this. If Jesus is not divine, but this highest creature, and that was one of the heresies of the early church called Arianism, then it meant that when Jesus came to suffer and die for us, it's all good, But God didn't come to us. God didn't come down. And so that extreme love of self-gift and self-dying for others, giving total of self, is not within the heart of God. This is not what he's doing. He's creating someone to go and do this for us. On the other hand, if we have what we call modalism, where I was talking about that, oh, when God is acting in one way, he's acting as Father, and when he's acting in another way, he's acting as Son, and in another way, he's Holy Spirit, but it's all really just one person, just kind of he has different mass type of thing, that, that modalism, then the only love that is in God is self love. Is self love. Because either, um, if the Father and the Son are different, then, then either his love is an illusion, it's an anthropomorphism, meaning we're putting on God some sort of human trait that isn't really there, or it's he loves himself, and that's not the highest love. And so God, at the very heart of who he is, doesn't have the highest love until he creates the world and the universe and everything, and then now that love is being poured, he's able to pour himself out, but he was incomplete before he made us. And therefore, he's not really God. So, therefore, the Trinity didn't have that perfect love. So we look and we say, if, if we believe that Jesus is God, either he, he must be a separate person if God is love. Separate person from the Father and the Holy Spirit. In order for there to be that total self-giving, self-dying to self-love poured out one to the other. And he's perfect in that for all eternity. Why is this important for us? If we're made in God's image and likeness, and all we were made was to be self-love, that we could see there's something wrong with that. But we were made in his, his image and likeness in order to be in community. To show that we were made to give of ourselves and die to ourselves for love of others. That's where we find our greatest joy. Yeah, we find great pleasure in, in our self-love as we turn in on ourselves and might waste our time on, on this particular thing or that particular thing, taking care of ourselves, and it's a great selfish endeavor. But it's all empty. Anybody that's looked at themselves long enough can say, yeah. <laughs> Feels good at the moment, but it, you know, it really is empty. 
But when we give of ourselves, when we die to ourselves, we might, it might be a struggle in the moment, but afterwards, what? We feel good about ourselves. Because we loved beyond ourselves. We reached out beyond ourselves. In the second reading today, we hear that God has given us the Spirit from His heart so that we could be united to Christ and being able to cry out, Abba, that is, Father. The very heart of who God is is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This communion of life and love. And He's from all eternity, God the Father is Father. Before He created humanity, before there was an earthly Father, God always was Father. He says, this is the love I have for you. This morning I was doing a baptism and the child I was baptizing was a little over one and a half years old. And so she was uh, making all sorts of noise and going from place to place. And as I was preaching my homily and I was talking about Jesus' baptism, how the father says, I am your father, you know, all that type of stuff. Um, and she's, she's, she's going up to her dad and saying, Dad! 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 Trying to get his attention, which of course he gave very readily, as opposed to paying attention to my incredible homily, so I'm not sure what's wrong with him. But I said, and that's how God wants us to relate to him, right? She knows that when she calls out on Dad, he's going to answer. And when we call out on our Father in heaven, when we call out Abba, we should know he's going to answer with great love. The mystery of God's love from all eternity, self-dying, pouring out for the other. And then when he creates us, he continues to pour out his love on us. And that's self-giving love, because that's who he is. And when we try to find out, what am I supposed to be? How am I supposed to be fulfilled? How am I becoming the best version of myself? It's when I learn not to turn inward, but to turn outward. Pouring myself out in love for others, and with that incredible trust in our Abba, our Daddy. As we celebrate this Trinity Sunday, we ask Almighty God for that grace to be able to recognize the incredible love, the overwhelming, the uh, unfathomable, merciful love of Almighty God. And ask him that we who are made in his image and likeness, that we may grow in dying to ourselves and pouring ourselves out in love of God and of others.